What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Level Up. Today, I'm really excited because we're going to be looking at the audio interface, the ba- the Mianocaster E2 audio interface. Here we go. Let's check it out. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Level Up. Today, I'm really excited about this video. We're going to be looking at the Mayanocaster E2 audio interface. Now, you can get it just the audio interface alone for about $119. You can get them on sale for as low as $95 on Amazon, depending on what time you go look for it. But generally, about $119. You can get it in kits. You can get it as a kit with the audio interface and the Miano PD100 for about $150. Or for $200, you can get the Miano PD100 audio interface, a boom arm like you see here, and a headset for about $199 up to $209, so somewhere in there. So you can get it in three different packages. So for full disclosure, Mayano did send this out to me to see if I'd be willing to review it for you guys on my channel, and I'm going to do it because this one has actually had my eye for a while, and it's a very specific... It's a very specific reason. There is a gain knob for low, mid, and high. Why is that so crucial? Well, all inner, bleh, I cannot say it. Why is that so crucial? Someone who has no idea how to EQ. They saw a microphone online, they bought it because it sounded good on someone else's voice, they hear it on theirs and they don't like it and they want to be able to change it. It can be a daunting task to start EQing if you don't know what you're doing. Very beginner and user friendly. I wish more audio interfaces had this on there. I'm an old school guy. I was a radio DJ in high school back in the early 90s. I had my own radio show. Everything was faders and knobs. None of this digital stuff. So the nostalgic part of me, it, it kind of plays to that part. So I absolutely love it. I'm going to do something a little different in this next segment right here. I'm actually going to start off with the cons regarding the AMA2. And the reason I'm doing that is because they may be deal breakers for some of you. And I don't want you guys to waste your time watching a 26-minute video only to hear at the very end, oh, it does that? No, nope, not for me. I want to start that right off the bat. And you guys can go and watch another video on the channel. Appreciate you guys' support. In fact, if you guys would like to support the channel, there's a super thanks right down below. You can donate to the channel, and that allows me to accumulate uh, funds to buy gear that you guys would like for me to review on the channel. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by doing that. Appreciate the love you guys are sending to this channel. So the con regarding this, what could be a deal breaker for some of you, is actually a pro for most of you. The reverb feature that comes on this audio interface is amazing. For vocalists, instrumentals, the audio interface at $100, $119 to $95, depending on the deal you get on Amazon for like Prime Day deals right now, I, it's as low as $95. Bucks. Features that come with this for vocalists and instrumentalists are just amazing for this price point. Absolutely love it. Like if I wanted to start capturing my voice and singing songs and music from my own channel to use my own stuff... I would buy this strictly for that purpose, a utility specialty tool, but it, the price is just, it's right there. However, for podcasters or YouTube content creators who do channel reviews in which accurate, real-time information is very important to you, that's going to be a deal breaker because the reverb, you can put it in original mode It'll, right here. You can't turn this button off. That's why I've got it right here so you can see it. When you're not using a feature on this, it's not lit up. It only lights up when it's activated. Case in point, I'm just going to hit the Bluetooth button. And now it's on. So it lets you know what's on and active by the lights being on. Some people wish that the lights would all, all the lights would be on all the time. But I actually appreciate this because it lets me know what it's doing without me waiting till afterwards, listening to my audio after I record a segment. Oh my gosh, that was on, this was on. The Mountacaster actually appreciate the fact that these lights don't come on unless it's active. The reverb is the button that does not turn off because it is always active. You've got to put it in original mode, which is the yellow color. All right, so as you cycle through, it's got different colors, red, purple, green, blue, things like that to let you know what style reverb you're in. And it'll let you know in your headphones, there's an audio prompt that tells you which one you're in when you cycle through. But uh, I reached out to Mayano to see if there's a way that I can turn off the reverb completely in my headphones. They said, you can't turn the reverb off on this. You have to put it in original mode. And then you have to take the reverb knob, which is on the far right here on the dial. And you'll see this, the in-depth review later on in more detail. But there's a reverb knob on here where you could turn the reverb strength from 0 to 10. 
So you could crank it all the way up or you could turn it all the way down to zero. And that's what you got to do to get rid of the reverb in your mix. Original mode, reverb knob, zero. But that does not clean up the audio in your headphones. So that can be a deal breaker for some of you. And I absolutely love this for vocalists and instrumentalists. What a, what a great option for you guys who are getting into that space at a budget price. But again, there's just no way to turn that off. I just wanted to say that right up front in the beginning because I appreciate your guys' support and I really appreciate your guys' time. This is a fair and honest review channel. I pride myself on that. And, you know, a lot of these videos that you've seen, I'm all giddy about them. You're like, oh, I don't ever see you knock anything. Well, that's because I don't want to spend two weeks and this kind of time to make a video for something I don't like. So because there are features on this that I absolutely love, I decided to go ahead and make this video. But I wanted to start off by saying what I don't like about it in case it's a deal breaker for you. But again, talking with other people that do use it, you just turn the monitor down on it enough to where it's, it's not like in your face. It's not in the forefront of your audio and they're rocking and roll with it doesn't bother them. So I just wanted to say that right up front because again, I value you guys' time. I appreciate your guys' support. I really appreciate you guys' support. So with that being said, here we go. If that's not a deal breaker for you, we're gonna dive right into the unboxing and features of this audio interface, what comes in the box, the cables, all that good stuff. And I just wanted to throw the Mayano PD400X for those of you who like this microphone. I love this microphone. It actually, I liked it right out the gate, but I'm actually falling more and more in love with it. The more I use it and the more I use it in these microphone comparisons, just by how bright and crisp it is. It almost acts like a condenser microphone, even though it's a dynamic microphone. And I like that. I like different, I like options. So uh, right now this is the Mano PD400X. And for those of you who are like, wow, I love that sound. How did he get there? I have the Mano PD400X plugged into the AMA2. And then I have none of the features turned on in the back. None of those uh, switches are activated. And my low, I have plus two on the gain and my low knob. My mid knob is also plus two, and then my high is plus three. So I moved it three to the right, and then mids, two to the right, my low, two to the right. So those of you, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments when I do these reviews like, oh, wow, what, what, what were your settings for that sound? I absolutely love that. So I just wanted to share that before we get going in case, hey, man, this sounds great. I love this. That's how I got it, using the pop filter. Pop filter kind of just kind of boosts that low end a little bit. Oh, just love it. All right, so for those of you who are still interested, you're still into it, you still like it, man, this has got the features that you absolutely love, that stuff that you just talked about don't bother me, then this is going to be amazing for you in this video. We're going to get into it. We're going to do a deep dive into the features and all the things it can do at 95 to 119 for just the audio interface, and then there are packages and bundles you can get from there that tear up in price. And thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification button if you like what you see so far. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. So right now you're listening to me on the new Mayano PD200X. Well, it's not new. It's been out a couple months, but it's new to me. I like it. I'm loving it. I'm really digging it. The whole Star Wars thing. You know, if you're Darth Vader wanting to start a podcast, this is the microphone he would get. I really believe that. So we're going to have some fun with it. Let's see what comes in the box. So as soon as you open it, we've got some literature right on the top. You get your manual with the instructions. A little letter from the company saying thank you. Appreciate that. And then you get this like hard laminated card that is the computer and mobile streaming quick setup guide. So I actually appreciate that. That's pretty cool. Gives you the USB-C to the USB-A connection. It's not the adapter where you can take it off and do USB-C to USB-C, but it's USB-C to USB-A. Nice thick cable. It's got that little denoiser thing on it. So security breach gives you a TRSS to TRSS cable for hooking up to Apple iPhones, iPads, things like that. And it also gives you another TRSS to TRSS 3.5 millimeter cable. So it gives you two of those. So no XLR cable that comes with it comes with it. Just kind of looking at it, we see a lot of knobs, which means a lot of features. This is not basic in any means as far as what it can provide you and the customization you can do with your audio. So a uh, lot of knobs here. Let's go ahead and hook it up into my setup over there in my main studio setup my main live streaming setup and we'll hook up the overhead camera and we'll get a closer look at what these knobs are, what they do. All right, here we go. All right, so we have our 
power button right here and the light bulb, the red button right next to it. That is your monitoring on and off. You can disengage your monitoring and your headphones with that. So there's a power button for the device itself and a power button for your monitoring. Then right here we have your DC 5 volt right here and this is your power source. Now this audio interface is battery operated you see right here but it has to charge and the charge only lasts so long all right so if you're worried about losing battery power you want to keep it plugged in USB-C to your power source in the wall this is your USB-C into your computer plug right here so that's how it connects to your computer then we have our live output one and two so that allows you to send your audio to two separate devices so uh, if you want to record one into your iPhone as a backup audio recording or send one out to like Discord or things like that if you're gaming, uh, you're able to do that. Then you have your monitor speaker input, 3.5 millimeter input for your monitor speakers in your studio. Then you have your auxiliary in so you could plug in a cell phone or an iPad or any device, your PlayStation console, Xbox, whatever it is. If you want to be able to bring gaming audio into your mix, if you want to use this for gaming, then we have our mic too. Important to notice that is a 3.5 millimeter input for your second mic. It is not XLR or quarter jack. So if you plan on using two microphones for this, you're going to need a very custom cable, which is XLR to 3.5 millimeter input for that. Then we have our mic setting switch right here. So on the far left, you have condenser microphone at 40 dB, or you can switch it to the two, the middle one, which is dynamic at 50 dB, and the one on the far right, which is dynamic at 60 dB, which is what we're using. Then we have our instrument input right here for quarter jack, and then we have the XLR input for mic one. All right, so now that we see what's in the back, let's go ahead and set this down and start playing with some buttons, shall we? All right, so then we have our auxiliary button right here, the big one. And again, when you have something plugged into the auxiliary input on the back via 3.5 millimeter, this will control the, the uh, volume of what's being brought into the audio interface. So that's your main gain control, so to speak, for your, uh, your auxiliary input. Then over here, we have our big knob, which is the output. Now, this controls the overall volume of what's going out to whatever device you have it plugged into, like your computer, anything like that. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. Off. All right, so we're bringing it back in. So this is your main volume control to whatever computer device you're trying to hook this up to to capture your audio. Then we have our fader for microphone one, which is our XLR input. But as I slide it, there is a good deal of resistance to this. So even though you only have a small section of real estate to cover low to high, you're not gonna overshoot by accident and blow anybody's eardrums out. You gotta really put some effort into it to get it where you want. It's, it's pushing against you just enough to say, all right, don't overdo it, don't overdo it. All right, then we have our 48 volt phantom power. This is to activate your Bluetooth right here. So if you wanna bring in some audio via Bluetooth device, turn that on, long press it, and then turn it off. All right, so right here we have sound pads. There are custom sound pads. We have A, B, and C. The reason these are labeled A, B, and C because these top three are one minute long recording sound pads. You can record custom clips, custom audio into those, and all you have to do to activate it when you first get it is you need to activate it by long pressing it, and you see it flashing right there. Whether there's something on there or not, you just have to push that button to erase it just goes into race mode. Let's clear the deck. You're now ready to record. And all you have to do to activate the recording is quickly press it once. And now you see it blinking. That means it's in record mode. So you're able to record a one minute clip into the Mayano Castro E2 via A, B, or C. And again, these sound pads are the same thing, but they're only 20 seconds buttons. If you're done and you don't want to keep going, just press it real quick and that stops the recording. Now that it's recorded, all I have to do to hear that recording is push the button. And now you see it blinking. And as it's blinking, that means it's in record mode. So you're able to record a one minute clip into the Mayano Castro E2. So there you go. I will say I recently did a review of the Fifine SC3. Now that had sound pads as well where you could record audio clips. And I think it was 15 seconds, but I will say the audio quality that this records in is much better. Uh, the Fifine SC3 kind of does like uh, AM radio type sound, which is fine, which is great. Uh, it wasn't a problem for me, but if that was a bugaboo for you, this will record sound in a much more crisp and clear quality. 
All right, so moving on to these buttons right here. These are your audio effects buttons. So reverb presets, this is very big. You can see here uh, on this audio interface that these lights are off. That's because they're not engaged, they're turned off. Reverb does not turn off. So if you like direct monitoring, if you like to have crisp and clear audio of your own voice, if you're doing podcast only, spoken word only, there is no way to completely eliminate the reverb that is in this audio interface. I reached out to my contact at Miano. They reached out to their, their tech support team and they emailed me back and said, there is no off button, but you can minimize the reverb by turning the reverb knob right here. This is the strength of the reverb. So if I turn it up and down, it will increase the reverb, but you're not hearing it now because it's in original mode. And it will increase the strength of the reverb of your voice. So they just told me uh, in order to reduce it so it doesn't affect me so much was to turn it down to zero, make sure it's in original mode, which is the yellow, the amberish yellow color, and then make sure my tones on my knobs are all at zero, which they are. I can definitely hear a little bit of reverb. It's something that I'm getting used to as I've been using it for the last three weeks, but just long term, if I was buying this solely for podcasting spoken word, I'm never going to sing into this thing. I'm never going to use instruments. I would probably go in another direction. And let me be clear before I continue. You've been listening to this whole time. You don't hear reverb in the, the audio, but in your headphones you will. So for some reason, there's no way to turn off the reverb going into your headphones. But it does turn off the reverb going into your audio going out. I just wish there was a way to disconnect that. That is the only knock on this thing, which would keep me from buying it myself as a podcaster, but not as a musician, not as a vocalist. I still think this is a wonderful audio mixer for you. And again, there's a way to minimize that reverb when you want to go into spoken word. It's just something you're going to have to get used to. I hope, I hope and pray that Miano can fix this with some kind of firmware update where you can just long press it to deactivate it altogether. Man, that would be awesome. That would just like elevate this to me to, wow, absolutely amazing for me, for spoken word guys, podcasters, live streamers. Mm, just depends on the person. That's the reverb preset. So let's go ahead and cycle through the reverbs and we're gonna turn this up from zero so you can hear the reverb effects of the different settings. There's an audio prompt in your headphones that Mayana will tell you what mode you're in. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it show. Okay, we're moving on. This is the one thing that I absolutely was dreading about doing this podcast, was having to sing in reverb mode just so you can hear the effect because I don't like to sing. I don't like my voice. All right, so purple, church mode. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, now we're in hall mode. This is valley mode. This is room mode. And by the grace of God, we're back to original so I can stop singing now. All right, so those are your reverb presets. And again, you can adjust the reverb by turning the knob up if you don't like reverb or any kind of latency. Again, when I reached out to Mayano to see how can I best get rid of the reverb in this thing, they said put it in original mode, turn it, turn the reverb down all the way to zero, and have your high, mids, and lows at zero. Still in there a little bit, something I can power through and get used to, but for me, eh. For some of you out there, it's be like, look, I love all the other features. I'm willing to deal with that because I'm not going to be talking into it very much. I'm going to be singing into it. That's where this really shines. Okay, now sidechain. Sidechain, you press this button. If you've got music coming in through your auxiliary input, by pressing this, it's like a quick preset where it automatically drops the audio of your music down to you know a certain level where you they can clearly hear you speaking and the music is now just a backdrop as you're going on. So that's a preset sidechain right there. Music only is just what you hear. It eliminates your microphone or anything else and it just plays the music alone. So what does dry wet do? When the indicator light is turned off, only mic input audio will be recorded. To activate the wet mode, the indicator light will be turned off, which the audio prompt says mix mode. All reverberated and background audio will be recorded and exported to output devices. When you hit that, uh, it will send everything out. And then when you turn it on, it's just going to record your microphone going out to those output devices. Turning on loopback will allow the Miano caster to record the system audio from the USB-C input. If turned off, you can still hear the system audio from monitoring, but it will not be recorded. 
So that's loop back. And then the denoiser. This is one that I just wouldn't touch. It attacks the mute button to mute the audio from the microphone so it doesn't pick up any background noise at all when you're not talking. Now, when I put it in high, it attacks the mute button before I even finish some of my words. So if, like, when I just said the words, it's, it, like, mutes me before I get into the end. At least it does in my headphone. I would, if you can, find an audio interface, a DAW, or OBS to use that for your noise suppression because that is way too aggressive for my taste. Uh, so those are the pads right here. And then we have our three knobs right here, the pad volume. This controls the volume of your sound pads. Your pitch is in the middle, which allows you to change the tone of your voice. It's a voice changer. So if we go to the left to about, I would say, 9 o'clock, this is what it sounds like. Do you like that really disturbing auto-change voice? Again, I think it was obscure mics that used the term the ransom call voice changer. There you go. So if you like that chipmunk sound, here you go. And then if you like the baby mode, here you go. And one of the things that is a little bit off is there is some serious latency that is activated when you use this. So whenever I go to uh, using the voice changer, I turn my monitor way down. So now I know I'm being recorded in baby mode, but it's not affecting the way that I speak because there's no latency. And then when I'm done with my voice changer, I bring it back up and then I, I turn it off. So that's the pitch. And then again, on the button on the right here is your reverb knob that allows you to control the strength of the reverb mode that you're using. And this is your auto tune. So again, another way you can change your voice. So you can sit there and you can cycle through the majors, letters to affect your auto tune. Anytime I have to sing, just to show you what it can do, I feel so sorry for you. I feel like when they're at the end of this, I should give you like a hotline number to some therapy when we're done. All right, so then you see right here is our levels, six knobs on the top. You got your lows, mids, and highs. Now, I absolutely love the low, mids, and highs because what is that? There are a lot of people out there that have a great voice that want to start singing and doing min instruments, but they have no EQ skills. They're not a sound engineer. The low, mids, and highs are an excellent option for you to be able to EQ without any experience whatsoever because it just, the, there's the low. And then I can turn that knob left and right, and I can clearly hear, you know, the change in the tone. Like the, the lows are completely gone, and then I can turn it up and I can clearly hear a lot more low end. And I don't need to be a sound engineer to know what to touch and how it affects my sound. So I love knobs. I love the dial knobs. I've always do. Like my Zoom Pod Track P8. Absolutely love that audio interface. But my tone, my EQing is nothing but a slider. Go more to the right if you want more of a brighter sound. To the left if you want more of a darker sound. But I can't really boost my mids on that thing if I want to. So I'm limited in what I can do as far as EQing my voice. Where here, I have a lot more options just by using the low, mid, and high. If you buy the kit where it comes with the Miano PD100, it's a great microphone, great budget microphone. In that like $40 price range, anywhere between $44 to the high 30s with Amazon coupons. It's all metal build quality. It's got great presence in the low end, great presence in the high end. But for some people, the knock on it is it's V-shaped. Now, for me, I like this sound. I'm fine with it. But for the people who don't that think that there's a little bit too much of a V-shaped sound, and what I mean by V-shaped is they have cut out the mids significantly to emphasize the low parts of your voice and the high part. If you don't like that, you can take your mid dial knob and you can put that back in to smooth it out between your lows and your highs if you want more of a smoother sound. If you just want to add a little bit, touch more mid into it, if it's a little too scooped for you, you can do that. You can add a little bit of mid, and you can take a little bit of low, or take a little bit of high out of there, and now you've got more of that, like, Shure SM7B broadcasty sound. So again, it's a very quick and easy way for you to adjust and change the sound of your microphone, and it's right in front of you. It's not intimidating. It's very basic. You can see what you're doing as you're doing it. So you're like, oh, I don't like that. You know what you did to undo it. Sometimes you get into these DAW audio interfaces as a beginner and you start making changes and then you don't know what you did to undo it unless you hit the reset to default and then you lose everything. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here as we move on. So this is the instrument gain. So if you have an instrument plugged into your mixer, this will control the volume, the gain that is going into the mixer. The instrument volume controls the volume of the instrument only into your headphone. And then this is the monitor the gain knob, the volume knob, so to speak, for your headphones only. This is the Miano caster. These are the buttons, and that's what they do. 
All right, now on to uh, my final thoughts. Okay, so my final thoughts, now that I've had a chance to go back and listen to it, regarding the Meowno Caster E2. I'm going to start with my pros and cons. My pros, I think it sounds really good. I was very happy with what I heard in my recording as far as spoken word. Vocals and instruments, this is a great entry-level device because of the reverb option that is on here. And the fact that it is very easy to EQ. The EQ on this, the low, mid, and high knob on this, is very beginner friendly. Again, if I was wanting to start singing and recording instruments, this is probably something that I would go with because it's only about $100. It's something I'm comfortable with. I love the customization. I love the sound pads that are on it. And again, I love the, how it's very easily EQ'd with the high, mid, and low knobs. All right, so my con regarding the Miano Caster E2, and it's a big one for me. And that is the reverb. With the Meano Caster E2, you are not able to turn off the reverb on this thing. It's a strength for the vocalists or the instrumentalists that are looking to get this. But for spoken word and podcaster, I like zero latency monitoring. I want direct. I want instant. And I want accurate as far as what I'm listening to from my voice and what's being captured. With the Meano Caster E2, you are not able to turn off the reverb on this thing. But you can turn it down. So... When you turn it down, it does cut off the reverb in your recording going to your device, but it doesn't turn it off in your headphones. You can minimize it, but you can't get rid of it altogether. And that's something that's very important for me. I want to be able to disengage it in my headphones. I want to be able to hear those quieter sounds that may be bleeding into my audio that I don't want in there at all. When the reverb is on in my headphones, even with it turned down, it has like an electronic sound to it. Not crazy, but just enough to throw me off. And the reverb, again, creates a little bit of latency, which also throws me off just a little bit. Now, messing with this for the last two weeks, I was able to get used to it to where it didn't affect me. And I was able to do this review with it with my headphones on. Because that was, again, that was something I wanted to know. Can it be done? I had it for two weeks. I could not do this video for the first couple of days because it really affected me. And it affected the way I was speaking into the microphone. But after about two weeks of playing with it, I was able to get used to it and I was able to do it just fine. So if that's something you can get used to, not have at it. Get yourself one. But if that is very important to you as it is to me, you may want to go in another direction. So again, I feel like the Meano Caster E2 is for vocalists or instrumentalists that are looking to get into a place and get a piece of equipment where they can start capturing their songs or their music. A great entry-level device that really does it. The reverb on this for those features is amazing for those people. But the reverb is a drawback for podcasters. Just know what it is you want out of your audio interface as far as direct monitoring before you get this. So, Miano, if you're watching this, I would really love a firmware update for podcasters or we could long press that reverb button and deactivate it. With that being said, the Miano Caster E2... Those are my thoughts. Thank you for joining another episode of Level Up. I'm Mike Newman. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and the like button. Because if you don't hit that notification bell, you're not going to know the other stuff that's coming. i got a stack of boxes right here of stuff that i got to review this week and next week. And that stuff is coming, so don't miss out. Thank you for joining another episode of Level Up. I'm Mike Newman. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm still looking for a catchphrase. I need a catchphrase.